Awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Cool. Oh, yay, it worked. Hmm. Cool. Okay. So just pretty much just want to just talk. I sent you the, um, the different uh, questions just to kind of like give us like a structure kind of thing. But wherever the conversation goes, that's fine. I, I mean, we talked about it a little bit the other day. It's just like the emotional healing and like what that journey has been like with John. Like when we first started working together, what, you know, you were saying he was just kind of stuck in a space and not being able to really get through what was perseverating and what he was, you know, struggling with. And so like, kind of just tell me like about what that change has been since you've been able to see him kind of release some of this stuff and like work through it with all the different therapies and stuff that you've been doing with him. Yeah. More specifically, um, I feel like for the longest time I, since in this journey, I've asked, um, about the emotional piece because I've always been someone that's, um, believes in emotional healing and that what we feel or think, or, you know, talk to ourselves, we feel it in our body, it presents ourselves in our body. Um, and with him, it just, I knew his background of growing up. I knew, you know, being in the military, I just, I felt like he's such a warrior that stuff was, he just wasn't being able to resolve it because he couldn't speak it. And so every time I brought that up, you know, it was kind of like, okay, we'll do a medication or there's really nothing we can do because he can't verbalize. And I just yeah. felt like we were hitting brick walls. And then he started perseverating his past. And I knew that I was like, it just kept going on and I, I didn't have the tools and I was guided to you guys. And since we've started with you all, you know, it just, it's continually gotten better. And where we were, when we first start working with you guys, we were into that perseveration of the past and trauma for months, like good four months or so. And it was just constant and taking that on every day. And then you know, he was feeling that, but I was also internalizing that. So it was just kind of like a constant circle. And, um, it was, it was holding him back on a cognitive level. And since we started doing this work, I mean, he's just talking more and more and more. It was like, we unlocked the key. We, you know, we opened it up and was like, okay, free. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to describe it. That's essentially like, all that emotional work. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's cutting that those limbic loops. It's letting that be free so that he's not trapped with that survival that trigger that survival right and it was um it was because you could see it in his eyes he wanted more but he couldn't verbalize it and i think a lot of people get stuck in you know i really don't want to talk about the past i really don't want to go think of it logically what's done in the past is the past right but there is a piece of it we have to finish <laughs> i've always thought of you need to finish the memories or you need to process everything and that's what I feel, feel like we were able to do on a more um, deeper level rather than just talking about it. Because like when I would go to a therapy or something like that and talk, I always felt like I left with these things that I needed to work on or I needed to think about or you know what I mean? And in this kind of work, it's so much deeper than that, that it almost you leave and you feel lifted up rather than feeling like this, this storm or you know, cloud on top of you after talking about it, right? Absolutely. Yes. And obviously there's, he did, I mean, we could tell a difference even, you know, just his face, like how his face would change with like doing some of the big things that came up. It was like, yeah, his body's really working to process through this, but luckily with all the therapies and other things that you have to support his system and you being there as a support person, um, he did amazing getting through some of the big emotional stuff that, that he had come up. It was, it was pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Even just from talking, like we were saying the other day, like from talking, you know, week to week, it's like, holy smokes, look at how much his face is just, he continues to change with all the things, you know, his processing. Yeah. He is just so amazing and so strong. Yeah. Cause that, that emotional stuff is not easy stuff to work through. We, we know, we all know that. So that's. But it was exactly what he needed to. Yep. It just, it felt so right. And it wasn't, it wasn't asking too much of him because mm -hmm. sometimes the trauma in the past were really hard to go back to, like I said, talking through it and trying to, I, you know, I, I did a lot of studying before working with you guys and understanding that, you know, when you have traumatic situations, typically you don't store the memory in a way that you can verbalize it. So then when you're trying to go back to that memory and trying to verbalize it, but you can't find the words how are you going to process it or how, so it's like, 
just like God always does, he led you guys into our life. And this technique allows you to get into that memory without having to find those words that you aren't actually, because I believe in the brain, like when you go through trauma, the, the speech or the words the, to talk about it don't store. That's something I don't, yeah. Sure. Yeah. But that memory's in there. And even like there were times that we'd come up to and he couldn't verbalize and couldn't remember exactly what had happened. But through testing, you could see that there was definitely a reaction, his face, his eyes, everything changed. And it was like, there's something there. And then watching him process through is just amazing. Like just he's, yeah, he's done some really tough work. I mean, the whole journey, the whole three years, it's been amazing watching your journey, but, um, but yeah, the emotional stuff that can be pretty tough, but he took it, he took it and was pretty strong working through all of that stuff. Yes. He just lost some sense. And I, I, I really encourage a lot of people that are going through any kind of situation like this is it, it trauma is trauma. I mean, we can't avoid it and it's going to play a part in who we are, especially when you're, it's, um, traumatic or like in a situation like somebody gets injured and it's like you're all there with them and I was actually talking to a friend the other day and it's just it's really getting hard for her and she just you know I she's she just doesn't know what to do and I told her you know just lay your hands on her heart center like her daughter's heart center and I said just sit there and touch her with love because I know on an energetic level the one that is suffering like we're is feeling the energy of you. So I always recommend caregivers take care of yourself and do this work as well, because whatever you vibrate or put out, they're going to feel, and it's going to affect their healing. Absolutely. And that's what's so important. Like with being able to work on you too, is, I mean, my goodness, you have done so much. I mean, all the, all the stuff, I mean, everything that changed in your life and people just don't realize just how much the caregiver is expending with obviously good reason but that, that is a lot on your system. It takes its toll. Yes. And the patience that one has to have. And it's, that's tough for people. And sure. people to let go and surrender and be in the process of it all. Um, so I feel like this work gives you that, any kind of the energetic work or working on, you know, these going and releasing past, you know, parts of the journey will help that caregiver sit in the place of uncertainty and sitting in that um, just waiting for the next thing. Cause especially with the brain injury, no one doctor is going to have it. Like as far as like the medical and stuff, you just, it yeah. is taking one step at a time, one step at a time. And, and your whole journey has been like that. That's been what's I think so refreshing is to see the different avenues that you've taken, that you've tried the things that you've introduced for this to be, it isn't just one person that's, I mean, there's so many hands that are going to be involved and people that have their own gifts that can come and share to help, you know, further that journey. And, you know, being able to, like, I know you've, when you guys go to um, see doctor uh, at Apex Brain Centers, um, that you started getting some work done. And I just commend you for that because you're just making yourself that much better so that you can be that much better for John. And, You've said that. So I love that you realize that. I think a lot of people, the caregivers do feel like almost like a sense of guilt of taking care of myself. When I have, you know, someone, my patient, my, my friend, my family member, whoever it is that they're the caregiver for to take care of. But I know we've talked about in the past that, you know, if you, you don't have anything more to pour, then you are no good for somebody. So you taking care of yourself, I think is in your videos that you had up on, uh, on Instagram of like your eyes on day one, when you're sitting there holding your eyes open. <laughs> hold them open. I was watching that screen. I was like, do I have to keep my eyes open? He's like, yes, he gave me pillows like to pull my eyes open. <laughs> it was such a great depiction though of a before and after of like how much, you know, you didn't, maybe didn't realize that you were struggling, but then you were able to do some things to help you so that, you know, you're, you know, feeling better and, and we know with that limbic response too, with that part of our brain, that emotional brain, that survival brain, that there's, if that part is running your brain, if that's the part that is the main focus, then everything is fearful to you. Everything's coming in as a, as a threat to your system. And that's not a good place to be. Just right. like with everything that's going on in our world today, everybody is seeing this as a threat. Stay away from people. You don't want to breathe near people, touch things. And and that just puts us in that fear mode and that's not healthy rest, digest, and 
and take care of us. So. Right. And then especially like in a situation like this, you know, when you're depleted like that, your immune system's so low and then you get sick and, um, and that doesn't help when you're a caregiver, you know, how do you help them when you're sick? So I, I knew all along that it was going to time come to place that I would find the right tools to take care of myself emotionally because I did not feel like talk therapy was like my go-to. I felt like the layers were deeper. George. Yep. And what's great about um, these techniques is that a lot of the, because, you know, therapy therapists are uh, mind doctors as we, you know, as we call them and us chiropractors being the body docs is that they've started doing this work as well as uh, also like the EMDR work that, you know, we'll do with John after and you as well after doing a session um, just to help really let go of that, that emotional tie to whatever that memory is, whatever that trigger is that you weren't able to process through at whatever point in your life. Um, I, I'm hoping to see this kind of stuff really start, you know, being more used by our medical community so that we can help people with such an important part of healing is healing that emotional part in everything in everything. Oh, yeah, there's just, there's just so much, I feel like with, you know, what's going on in the world, I think we're heading in a way of people more understanding frequency and energy. Like mm-hmm. that's what we're all made of. And it's not anything like mystical and stuff like that. It's just reality. It is, that is what it is. I mean, what do you think how people talk on a radio? It's a frequency, yeah. right? You know, it's, it's nothing to be afraid of and it's nothing that, so um, I do believe people are going to understand that more and more. And especially like with, emotions you want everything to flow through your body and when things are stuck or you're having this nagging pain i for even when i taught pilates i knew that something was connected to that you know mm-hmm. uh, and realizing that your body will speak to you what is that bo- the work um i love the book um oh gosh i'm not gonna think it off the top of my head but what is your body trying to tell you i have it's it's a really good book and it's like oh cool there. Like I've really correlated, like if my throat hurts, it's something I need to say out loud to somebody or something. Yep. Isn't that amazing too? And then that just clears up or your eyes are bugging you or your ears are bugging you. What don't you want to see? What don't you want to hear right now? And our bodies are so amazing and powerful and giving us things, little, little, little uh, info, bits of knowledge. And we're just so used to turning that off and not listening to it. But I agree with you. I think people are really starting to come around to, you know, more of a natural, you know, looking into myself and how I can kind of help balance myself and listen to what's going on, like different things, different pains that come up in your body. And what is that trying to tell you? And what can we work on to help get through that? Yes, I I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So for any of those caregivers, like people that are out there that maybe don't realize the things that, you know, you do that are so self-serving to you and taking care of you, what's something that maybe you'd want to tell them to kind of give them that, that okay, that support to, you know, look at you and take care of you too? Yes. I, I, you know, I think number one would be saying that you're suffering just as much as they are. Like you're internalizing what they are internalizing. Even if that, you know, you can cope with it a different way, trauma or anything that's life changing like that or caring for someone else on that level is going to affect you. So just being aware of that, even if you don't think it's affecting you, right? Um, And I'd say be proactive, just start making time every day for yourself and doing, finding little patterns or little things to do every day, like a pattern to do every day. and it's, um, and taking care of yourself is only but going to help them because your, your energy is going to reflect their healing. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you recommend? Like some of the things that you do for yourself, like, you know, I know you go running every day and try to do your stretches and stuff, which is so serving to your mind and body. What are other kind of things that you do that are to make sure you're taking care of, taking care of, of Laura? Yes. I try to take a bath at night before going to bed, just kind of like have some time. And, um, after I put him to bed, that's always really nice. Also learning to say no and learning to, um, when you're caring for someone else and it's like full time. And, you know, I was always somebody that said yes before this accident. And once it came, I just, I, I was putting too much pressure on myself to do everything or to answer everyone or to be, 
And I just realized my focus and my, where I needed to be was right here with John, that I had to start learning how to say no and not feeling bad. If you don't get back to somebody, not feeling bad. If you don't answer all your emails, like we live in that world that it's so convenient to get in touch with each other. But at the same time, every people understand. Um, and those that don't, then maybe that's the wrong person. Right. So I think putting on yourself, um, not feeling like you have to care for everyone else as well as the person you're caring for. So you got to care for yourself, then care for them. And then when you have extra time in, then get to everything else. That's brilliant. That saying no is so hard for so many people just day to day, but with being a caregiver on top of it, like that's, I can't even imagine the way that 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 must've felt so stretching on you to constantly feel like you had everything for everybody do this do that that's that's taxing that's exhausting and finding boundaries too you know Ooh, um, yes that's a tough one as well because it's you know you're getting insight from everyone like do this do that do this and I, it's hard because it is a lot of work when you know a lot of doc you know we have a lot of we are very blessed we have a lot of you know team of functional neurologists working with us and we get information from everyone but what i try to do is i try to in that day mm-hmm sense what he needs not feeling the pressure i have to do everything because the brain i mean the brain will actually get smart and just do a pattern of it all the time you know so switching it up and just taking the tools when they feel right and not having like a checklist it's not a checklist i mean we all don't live in a checklist and just enjoying the journey Yeah. yeah well when you have that checklist i mean that's just another thing you have to do is I have to get to this, I have to do that. And then you're coming from a place of stress and is that serving to the person you're helping? Right, right. And then just like when I was telling my friend, just lay your hand in touch with love. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is so much more powerful than an hour of therapy. Yeah. If you think about it, like an hour of stressful therapy. And you know, with John, I think one thing that I, I try to stress to a lot of people is, you know, with the brain, the brain fatigues, we all know that. Yeah. And less is more sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there also is sometimes cons to doing too much. Um, I spoke to a a caregiver one time a a few, maybe a year or two ago, and they were just saying, you know, he just seems like he's, you know, tired all the time and all this. And she said they'd been doing therapy for two and a half years, six days a week, three hours a day. I said, maybe just take a week off, you know, it's not going to hurt him. No, that's a, that's such great recommendation. Just be, just be in the moment and just kind of let everything just integrate. I mean, since being home with all this going on, he's blossomed even more because maybe he needed a time, a break from all the different places and things we were doing, you know? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes it feels like this, uh, this being at home, this stay home has really opened up a lot of people's eyes. Yeah. everywhere. I know we've talked about this a couple times of just resting. You're not off running to this appointment or that appointment, but you're able to just kind of be, and we just don't do that present day, just be as well as, as we should be doing on a day-to-day basis. It's more freeing when we do though, you know? It is. Well, I think a lot of people are realizing that right now. It's so amazing going out for a run and I see all these families out on their bicycles getting fresh air. I'm like, and there's no pollution in the sky. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just heaven on earth right now it's so gorgeous and it's so what we're meant to be doing I agree a lot of writing on my page about stillness and being in the moment and you know and it's I've learned that in this journey because you know I was at the top of my Pilates world John was the Navy SEAL and he was deploying and doing all this stuff and you know we just we were living our lives now we still had faith and we believed and we did you know I did all this I was still like very connected to my body and everything with the work I was doing but we were going about our way. And then all of a sudden, just like everyone's getting today, we were stopped, you know, everything stopped just like this um, virus. Every, you know, they had just closed the world or their um, US down. And it's, there's something powerful about that. And we've grown even more being in that space of stillness. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's something about connecting to that stillness and It's maybe uncomfortable in the beginning and it's something that we're so not used to. We've conditioned our bodies and our minds to be busy, busy, busy all the time, but getting to that space, definitely. I know we've, we've talked a lot about that with like connecting to 
an area maybe that's bothering you or something like you were saying with your throat and reflecting like what's going on inside. Let me check in with myself and see what's going on right. and, and being able to, you know, do the work, do the, you know, intentional stuff, like honoring yourself that you're still, you know, doing your movements, that you're keeping yourself moving and running and all of these, you know, good for your body things and your mind. It's awesome. Just, I can't even tell you once we've unlocked, I mean, he was stuck in trauma. And it was just this limbic loop. I mean, it just, same people, same things. I mean, we were up at night and he would just repeat. That's what you're eating and sleep. And it was, <clears throat> he just couldn't break through it. And once we started, like I said, unlocking that, it's just, he's blossoming. Yeah. It's like freedom. He let go of it was like a release for him. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we were, like we were talking about yesterday, like all the past stuff that he was so like wrapped up in talking about. Now it's all these things like, you know, the lawnmower. He wants to get on that lawnmower. <laughs> it's just, oh my gosh, he is such, he's, he's pushing forward. He's, he's seeing, it's like you guys said, it's, we weren't stuck in negative. We were in a different part. It was all positive, like his future and what he wants. He wants kids. He wants a motorcycle. He wants lawnmower. He wants this, you know, it's like, that's, he's joyful. He's ready to do it. Yeah. Right. Well, and you, I don't think it nearly is enough, you know, and because I know how humble of a person you are, the credit of all the work and listening to your intuition and sticking by his side of, like you said, instead of having a checklist of all the things I need to do, listening to what he needs in that moment and that day, it's just, it's amazing. It's been really cool watching, going back, I've caught up on a lot of different videos. I didn't realize there were so many videos out there, but to see the journey and to see like, you just really, you just trust. And that is such a problem for most people in this day and age that you're, you're inspirational. You're a big piece of hope that you, you can trust this journey and trust that you're giving all that needs to be for, you know, the person you love, whether that be your child or your husband or your wife and look at what he's done by you having that trust in God and in your, you know, people coming into your life that needed to be there when they needed to be there. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's cool. It gives me chills just thinking about just all the cool, amazing blessings that have come out of you staying true and, and just, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. One thing I just thought of as you were saying that is, you know, um, one thing I'd always say to myself when we were in a moment that was really tough, mm -hmm. um, is reminding myself it's only temporary. Yep. You know, I think in any aspect of our life, we can remember that anything that we don't like or, you know, it's bothering us or it's temporary, we can always change. Yep. Um, so in those moments that it's really dark, you know, and just believing that we're getting further, just be here in this right now and let him process through it and let him experience the journey. Yep. Even the hard parts, even the hard traumas that had to come up, I mean, it's one of the hardest things leading people through this, talking people through old traumas, but you have to go through it. And once you face that, then, like you said, you can unlock that piece and you can move forward. It's right. just ugly and hurts and is icky for a minute, but then you're pushing through and so much growth comes out of that. Right. right. And it's almost so subtle too. I mean, it is in the sense when, for those that have never done this kind of work, it's subtle that it doesn't bring it up to a point that it's, it's like looking back, I'm like, how did we get right here? Like it just, it's gone, you know? Um, so it wasn't, it, I mean, it was tough work, but it wasn't the, it didn't take us down, you know, down. I don't know. It uplifted. It was uplifting, powerful, I guess, freeing for people. Yeah. Well, and you were doing a lot of extra things too, to help support his system while he was going through that. Because definitely, you know, things can come up that are very traumatic and hard to get through without proper support. That's, and with talk therapy, definitely there's, you know, a perk to all of these different kinds of therapies. But I feel like with the kind of therapy that we've been doing with, with him, it, it, it frees, but then you have all these support things that you've already done in the past that just added to giving him the, we're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And we're going to see the light on the other side. And that was huge for, I, I believe, huge for him. Yes. Yeah. You and know. you too. And you too. Oh, I'm glad that we, we had some big things come up the last time that we were working and it was definitely oh, fun God. watching your face change as you were working through your stuff. 
So high five to you for doing all the work that you're doing to keep yourself. You're amazing. You're amazing. So yeah, it's helped so much both of us really. It's both the, it's a journey together, the caregiver and the person going through whatever they are going through. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank cool. You. All right, girl, have a good rest of the day. You too. Bye.